This is The Lowdown with Brave Mama, a community to see you, hear you, and support you on your journey living with pelvic organ prolapse. Hi there, it is your host, Steph Thompson here. I just want to bring awareness to this month in particular. It is April and it is International Caesarean Month. Now, lots of people for lots of different reasons have their own agenda when it comes to this Awareness Month. What we want to do at Brave Mama is really recognize that our mamas, cesarean section, vaginal birth, adoption, however you come to be a mum, prolapse does not discriminate. You can still have a pelvic organ prolapse with a cesarean section birth. We know that there are so many other risk factors that lead to women having pelvic organ prolapse. What we would love to do for the rest of this month is actually focus our conversations around cesarean section birth how to recover, the types of things that you can be doing and using to support you with a cesarean section recovery and potentially a prolapse at the same time. This week on the show, I invited Sinead to come on and share her experience in childbirth that then led to the creation of the SRC support garments. These are for women who have prolapse incontinence and support pre and post birth. And just before we get into today's episode, I do want to let you know that today's podcast partner is the Empowered Motherhood Program app. We have mentioned it a couple of times on the show, and while it is an absolute game changer for women who are prenatal and postnatal, they also have a specific dedicated section for women who have had cesarean section births and all of the essentials needed for a good recovery. So go and check out the app. There is a link in the show notes with the promotional code, so you can also receive 10% off for the lifetime of your membership. Let's get into today's conversation with Sinead. Thank you so much for joining us, Sinead. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation that we started at the beginning of this week, and I'm so glad you've come back because I want to dig deeper on that. Now, you shared with me very bravely of your story as a mum of three and what you had to endure simply to become a mum during that pregnancy. And I want to cover that today. So let's start with the pelvic girdle pain that you experienced in your second pregnancy. How did that present itself for you? And then what was the journey like for you during that pregnancy? Okay, well, I actually developed pelvic girdle pain and low back pain in my first pregnancy as oh, well. No. My eldest is 25 now. And oh, honest to God, I've never experienced anything like it. But I developed that pain until probably I was between 25 and 28 weeks pregnant. Okay. And then there was a big gap between our first and second. And you know how you forget. I I had forgotten (laughs) about pelvic girdle pain. Well, let me tell you, that came back pretty quickly second time round. Earlier in the pregnancy, you mean? Much, much earlier in the pregnancy. So earlier than 20 weeks. And... Mm you know, you basically got another 20 weeks to go and you think, how am I going to get through this? The the pain, I, the pain is just, it's hard to describe. It's just, it's just something that is there. It's gnawing away at you all the time. And it's pain is, is wearing mentally not Mm -hmm. and as, as it is physically. And I got to the point where, you know, I was on, I was on medication like analgesics by by my GP uh, because the pain was so bad. Towards the end of pregnancy, I I could hardly walk. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. You felt like your pelvis was going to – I still feel like my pelvis was going to explode all the time. That's probably a poor description, but that's how I felt. And then subsequent uh, – my third pregnancy – it wasn't really planned, if I'm being completely honest. Sure. And I was pregnant again five months after the birth of my second child. Okay. And I, it wasn't, like I said to you the other day, that I didn't want to have another child. It was just how am I going to cope with this? How, how's my body going to cope with it? I've got a toddler. Mm-hmm. Uh, like she was She was five. Well, she wasn't even a toddler. A she baby. was a baby. She was five months old. And, yeah. of course, by the time Neve came along, you know, she was 14 months or so. Yeah. And she was one of those babies that was, you know how some babies are really light 
And yes. Some of them are just really heavy. Dense. <laughs> like a brick. Yeah. And it's like a real struggle to bring, to pick them up. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very difficult when, because she wanted to be picked up all the time. Of course uh, she did. When the, when the third one arrived as well. And just that was, that was excruciating. I actually had to stop picking her up because mm. I herniated my wound, my C-section wound, and I still have issues with that today. Every time I went to pick her up, I would bleed profusely. So I had to stop doing that, oh, um, yeah. which, was, which wasn't great for her, not great for me either, you know. Of course, the connection with your toddler at that time would have been really difficult. If you don't mind, I've got a couple of questions that I was thinking as we went along. When it was your first pregnancy, obviously as a first time mum, we don't know what we know by the time we get to our third. So when you went to your GP in the later stages of pregnancy, did they let you know that it was pelvic girdle pain then? And then how could you potentially help help that? Like I'm not going to say treat it, but I don't think you can treat it really. They didn't, they didn't know. And mm. if I'm being really honest, I hadn't a clue. You don't know. And I think there's a lot more education and information around today. Mm. And there are specialists, women's health physiotherapists, you know, that I think women today are better educated with respect uh, to accessing information, education, and also social media. Like there wasn't any social media around. Right. And mothers-to-be and new mothers, they're on social media all the time. Mm -hmm. And what I had was I had a mother's group. Yes. Um, if I put my hand up, I went to mother's group, I think, twice. Okay. It I, I did, It was all about the... I felt overwhelmed because my first child was a very, it was very difficult. He never ate and he never slept. So okay. I didn't sleep either day and night. He was a cat napper mm. and he would drink 20 mils, 30 mils, and then he would fall asleep. I would do all sorts of stuff to wake him up, to try and fill him up so he would sleep. Mm -hmm. This We went to sleep school. Uh, that didn't work. I tried everything. He absolutely sent me around the twist. Um, and that, that's on top of, uh, you know, like a third trimester living in constant pain. Tell me, is there any relief from this pain or is it 24-7? I personally have not experienced it. So I want you to help educate me as well as all of our listeners. When you experience this in pregnancy, does it, does it go away at all? It doesn't go away during the pregnancy at all. It, it okay. will, it does go away, generally speaking, once you give birth. But yeah, the pain, the pain is constant. I had it day and night. Uh, sleeping was difficult. Mm. It was just there, as I say, gnawing away at you all the time. All day. All day, all night. And I have to be honest and say, I really hated being pregnant. And sure. with what I went through, that's that's what led me to uh, develop these products because, as we said a few days ago, you know, pregnancy is something that you should be able to enjoy. Well, that's what we're told we should be doing. That's all the imagery that we see mums rubbing their belly and feeling glowing. They use the yeah. word gl glowing <laughs> and they say that women should be feeling all those love hormones and the nesting. That's what that's what we've been told in society. I think the reality is for so many women now is that that's not the norm. No. It's, <laughs> you, it's you're not. lucky if you've got that. I mean, there are a number of, of women, of course, a large number of women that sail through and don't have, they might have a little bit of low back pain, but they don't, you know, they've been fortunate enough to escape uh, the rigors of, of pelvic girdle pain because, of course, you know, pelvic girdle pain, it's your sacroiliac joints at the back where your sacrum joins your pelvis. Yep. And in certain circumstances, your symphysis pubis at the front where it comes together with that big ligament, that can move. And some women feel, I didn't feel this. Mine was sacroiliac related. 
But some women feel that their pelvis is coming apart and that they, wow. their symphysis pubis is grinding when they walk. Can that's you imagine? That, yeah, that's that explosion feeling. I actually think that was a good analogy because as you said that, I could feel, you know, that pressure cooker just before mm-hmm. something explodes, it's at its absolute peak and yep. maximum before it explodes. I love that you've already gone there. That was going to be my next thing. Every story and every mum who has a, a story, I love it when there's a plot twist. And your plot twist is <laughs> that when you decided after your first, second and third pregnancy of living in constant pelvic girdle pain, that no, no, this is actually not good enough anymore. And even if you were not going to choose to have another child yourself, you had the vision that women should not have to go through what I did alone. And I love that about you. Now, I know we're going to talk a little bit about the products in a minute, but do you remember the moment when you decided, okay, I'm going to do something about this? Tell me about that moment. I remember it vividly. And it was after I gave birth to Pierce uh, by cesarean section. He was a breech baby and he was quite, I'm not a big person. Okay. So he was very big for me, even though he was normal weight. I mean, I'm not that tall, but also my torso is, is small. So okay. I was enormous. I looked enormous, even though he was, you know, a normal weight baby. Right. He was big for me. So, and he was breached. So I had to deliver uh, by a cesarean section, which was fine. I, I That didn't worry me in the slightest. Okay. But I... I remember a friend, a nursing friend who I'd worked with, you know, in intensive care and cardiothoracics, and she said to me, oh, Sinead, wear something that's supportive for your wound because it'll really help. Oh, for the cesarean scar. Yeah. Okay. So I did. It was a a sports short, but it was made of, of kind of almost like in between our fabric and a neoprene, like a wetsuit fabric. It wasn't tight. It wasn't restrictive, um, but it was it was quite hot. And he was born in November, and it was it was it was very very hot at that time of year here. It was unusual okay. for it to be that hot, but it it allowed me to get in and out of bed really quite easily and the the midwives were quite surprised at my level of mobility after a c-section okay but the thing it didn't address was separation of my abdominal muscles and any back pain and I thought okay I know enough about because my sister is a fashion designer and that's handy yeah (laughs) and I had the medical background okay because do you know why you mentioned some big technical words back there? So I thought you'd either learnt them on your SIC journey in developing these shorts or you had a medical background. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. So I've been involved in different sort of areas. I did nursing initially, then specialised in intensive care and cardiothoracics. And then I went back to college and did an honours degree in podiatry. And my oh, honours wow. thesis was in the biomechanical part, the biomechanical area. So I was able to apply, obviously, all the sciences from the Bachelor of Science that that you you do when you become a podiatrist. And then, of course, I went on and did the the honours thesis in in biomechanics. So I had quite a strong strong Mm. knowledge and also all the experiences that I'd been through around the world, nursing and in intensive care, et cetera, et cetera. So I was able to draw, I guess, on, on all of that knowledge. So... I knew exactly what I wanted to create and I knew that I knew what the common conditions were obviously because during pregnancy and and postpartum. So I wanted to apply specific paneling to the garment so that it addressed specific issues during pregnancy like pelvic girdle pain and the joys of if of vulva varices. I mean they're just they are just something something else and it's a bit of a taboo subject women don't talk a lot about vulva varices because it's a it's a bit like oh it's something not so nice is happening down there let's do that now do you mind because i know this is a little bit off topic but i think even it's something that i now am a little bit aware of but haven't experienced it 
What is it like? I didn't develop them with Pierce, my eldest, but I developed them with Rochine, the second, and Niamh, our third. I went to the bathroom one day and I thought, what the hell is going on down there? And the vein was so big, it was like I'd suddenly grown a testicle. Right. Now that's so a bit of an feel uh, that is an exaggeration. But the the vein it becomes engorged. Mm. So it's a bit like if you imagine a big varicose vein on your leg, yep. it's like that, but of the vulva. So wow. it's very uncomfortable. And sometimes I'd be in a supermarket and this thing would just start to play up because either the baby was moving, they put extra pressure on an area yep. of your pelvis so you'd get increased engorgement in that area. And of course, your go-to is you want to you want to grab onto yourself to alleviate the pain and the pressure. Of well, course. that's not like ideal in the middle of the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Do you imagine? And obviously the friction, the simple, because I know even know with prolapse, when it does feel really engorged and that friction of simply walking like back mm-hmm. to your car for saviour, it's intense. Oh, it's, it's absolutely intense. It's, it's like this sudden intense pain and because mm. you're in a public place, you feel like you can't hold on to yourself. Well, you and can't. Let's you face can't, it. No. Really. So you get yourself out of the supermarket, you leave your trolley full of food and, and off you go. And, you know, you're very apologetic, but there's nothing you can do. The, mm. other, the other time that it's really difficult is when you're going from lying to standing in the night when you want to go to the bathroom. Sure. And you suddenly you get out of bed, you get up and suddenly you have this rush of blood to that vein wow. and it's it's even though it's a vein it feels like it's pulsating throbbing you know uh, yeah as soon as you said that I, th- I could just imagine <laughs> the rush of blood and then that throbbing sensation because two women with avulsions quite feel that nerve pain after a certain time in the day and they have that throbbing it's like the whole rear end is like this like, oh, a, heart, yeah. like a heartbeat you can almost feel it in your eyes and if you've got that really good mind body connection it's just intense i know i've used that word but it's full on it's hugely it's hugely intense i by the evening i used to get to the point that i had i was so demented i used to go to try and alleviate some pressure on my pelvis i used to because sitting was difficult, standing was difficult, lying was difficult. I still remember myself doing it on all fours in the lounge room, and I used to rock. Like oh. I'd be on my knees and on my hands. Yes. And I used to rock to try and sort of soothe my mm. pelvis. As much as you can. As much as I could. Mm. Oh, it, used to, it used to send me to distraction. So... It was all of those experiences that really pushed me mm. to to develop the, the, the products. Yeah. Let's talk about SRC for a little while. I think it's really helpful because we've talked about, obviously, a, an issue that a lot of women listening right now would have experienced. You came up with a solution, and it's been around for a long time. So you've got mm-hmm. the science background. You've got the testing, the research. Tell me, I know that there's four main products, but which one would be best suited to anyone listening right now who has experienced either of those terrible, horrible things that you've just explained? The pregnancy product. So the pregnancy product was designed for pelvic girdle pain, yep. low back pain, vulva varices, and swelling or varicose veins of your leg. Okay. The, pr- the pregnancy product comes in two styles. It comes in an under-the-bump style for women who don't want something over their tummy, yep. or it comes in an over the over the bump style. Now the top of the garment is really soft. It grows and stretches with you. So as you grow, you grow into this sort of uh, soft material at the I top. I love that. Yeah. You know, here's a little secret for you. So many women who I speak to privately, when we are living with prolapse, quite often we are no longer able to wear pants at all. Mm-hmm. So it's skirts and dresses and that's it to have comfort. But when you do really just want to wear pants or you need to wear pants, we're still wearing maternity pants for that exact reason. Because as the day goes and your tummy expands and bloats out with the prolapse, uh, it it expands with you. So, you know, it's 
we're still wearing them even though there's no more babies coming. So that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> but specifically, I know you and I connected in particular because I was interested in your recovery shorts that are talking yeah. about women with prolapse. Let's talk about those ones next because I think most of our audience here really want to know about prolapse support. Okay. So before we jump to the, the, the specific garment for prolapse, the recovery short was designed for after delivery to help bring your abdominal muscles back together and help heal any perineal wounds if you've had a, a vaginal delivery. Okay. Uh, with an episiotomy, stitches, tears, and or a cesarean wound because applying compression to a wound improves healing and it improves mobility as well. Mm-hmm. Going on to the prolapse, stress urinary incontinence and prolapse garment, that's called the SRC Restore. Yes, apologies. I think, I think I just called them the wrong name, but I meant no, to say Restore. Just, <laughs> it's all so new it's to me. It's SRC Restore, and it was, I guess it's an, almost a little combination of some of the pregnancy and the, and the recovery because mm-hmm. the gusset piece has got three layers. Now, in all our garments, the, the paneling is really quite technical because in the restore garment, you've got three layers in the gusset piece. Okay. Now, each layer of fabric in there, you've got two layers of an open hole mesh and you've okay. got one layer of the shell fabric or outer fabric. Now, each of those layers is cut on a different plane. So they're all cut oh, differently. So crossing over. They're for the, all crossed. For those who can, oh, are watching, I'm actually doing it with my hands. That makes mm-hmm. sense. So it's like it's a really supportive web, kind of yes. like our collagen and fascia should be. Yeah, Had exactly. we not had damage. Okay, exactly. yes. Exactly. And the reason we have gone to that extra trouble, which is, as you can imagine, in a factory setting, it's, it takes three times as long. Okay, to do this because that fabric has to be cut in three different ways. And then mm-hmm. each layer has to, each of the three layers have to be put together. And yes. then those three layers are sewn to another three layers. So you can imagine the complexity to make this thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's just not even remotely funny. So that's why we have specialist <laughs> factories that, that, that construct these garments. Yeah. Of course, when you just, when you look at the garment, you don't see the technology. Oh, the science in it? That's why I love that you've explained it, literally, because you've designed it from conception now to proof of concept and then helping women. I know personally we have had women in our Brave Mother community who have recommended them to me over the years and especially in the last six months, which is why I think, oh, it's time to connect with SRC, (laughs) you know. And yes, I am currently trying them, but it's only been a couple of days. So it's probably really too early for me to say anything just yet. I think our community know that I say what I mean and I mean what I say. And so I'd love to be able to come back if you're okay with this and connect again and give you that feedback. But I want to know how long would you think for someone like me who has pelvic organ prolapse to try these products like what time frame? Because I always give things 21 days, 21 days to start a habit, 21 days to da da da. But in particular, what would you recommend? A lot of women with, well, let me go back. Sure. In the studies that we did, we did one study that was uh, for stress urinary incontinence and the other one was for first and second degree prolapse. Okay. And the results were, they were just mesmerizing really. Uh, the quality of life improved significantly. In a really positive way. Yeah. Yeah. Their incontinence decreased, so their stress urinary incontinence decreased, so their quality of life increased. Of it's course. The, the feeling of pressure and of everything falling out, secondary to prolapse, that pressure was alleviated, so their quality of life was improved. Yeah. It happened within a week for some women. Okay. For others, it happened, you know, two, three weeks down the track. Okay. Would this be something that you would wear all day or is it a, a certain just during exercise or just during something? And can you, sorry, I'll get, let you answer that one first and then I've got the next question. <laughs> we would like you to wear it all the time, even to bed. Oh, that was my next question. And do you wear them to bed as well? Okay. Wear them to bed. And the reason, the reason we advocate wearing all our products to bed is because they're working while you're sleeping. 
So what this product is doing for you is when you put the restore on and you pull it right up because you, because the gossip piece has to be closely in contact with your perineum. Yes. Otherwise it can't function because it's the compression to the perineum that provides that proprioceptive feedback loop to the pelvic floor muscle to be active. Yes. And I that's get that. what stabilizes or helps to stabilize your bladder, your uterus. Okay. Your bowel. Sure. And that's why women feel their incontinence is decreased. Okay. And the the symptoms of prolapse with respect to pain and pressure are significantly decreased. I think everyone with prolapse pain needs something to look forward to or something to feel like they have an option. And yes. now it makes sense to me why you sell them in a two pack because or in a single pack, but the two pack would be if you're wearing one during the day, the next day you might need to similar to period underpants just wash them out let them air and then you have the other pair so you can alternate that makes a lot of sense definitely exactly exactly yeah. and so and they go yeah. over your underpants right so they're they go meant over to be your underwear okay but then under your clothes yep that makes yeah. sense to me okay i think i myself a couple of days in am really excited to give these a go what about for women with avulsions, which is, I feel like we're a different kettle of fish to women with prolapse because it's generally stage three and four prolapse. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had, I mean, I know the research hasn't been done there yet, but have you had feedback from any We've women? Had, we didn't think that the product would work for stage three, four women, okay. yeah. but we've had women in the prolapse community who who are in those stages and if, and the product has been very very successful for them but there is no clinical research because we haven't we have we didn't include those women in our research okay. but we have had some incredible feedback and if anyone wants to go jump on the website and look at the reviews for restore you can pull okay. them up and there are a lot of women there that will talk about their the degree of prolapse yeah and sure you'll see that some women are you know stage Difference. three four and i think what we'll do too i might reach out to the women in our brave mama community and say would you if you've already purchased them and tried them are you happy to share your feedback anonymously if they wish just mm -hmm. so that that we can just be able to get that balance of being able to make the decision to try something for yourself i think i said to you the other day I will leave no stone unturned to find something to even just relieve a bit of pressure yep. sometimes. Like I'm not looking for a miracle fix. I'm not looking, thinking it's going to stitch it all back up and reverse it. But I also think it's everyone has to make a decision to say, I am not comfortable living like this and this is what I'm going to do about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that we also have, you know, that... I'm going to say stigma of being a very vulnerable community. We're talking about a very vulnerable topic. However, I don't believe anymore that we have to think of ourselves as only vulnerable. We no. can be vulnerable, but we can also be empowered. And I think SRC and your, even your tagline, everything that you are standing for is about empowering women. Mm -hmm to feel the best they possibly can. No, undoubtedly. And the other thing I'd like to, there are a couple of things I'd like to add. Sure, go um, ahead. We have a 100% money back guarantee because you know what? Ooh. We know that not everything out there is going to work for every woman. We're all different. We're all made up differently. We're all different shapes and sizes. So we want people to try the product Mm. But we want them to be secure in the knowledge that if for whatever reason they don't like it, they can return it okay. and they will get their money back. I love that. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I know. <laughs> that is such a safe way. Most avail of that. Mm. Uh, I mean, we have a, a really generous exchange policy as well. If you get the wrong size, they go on the website, they go to the returns, exchanges, refunds page. Yep. There's a list of instructions there of what to do. We send them a label at our cost. So oh. we pay their postage. 
in a, that's in Australia. So they can return it free of charge mm -hmm. to us. And get and a different we one. we will then send them out the size or whatever they want to swap it for. Yes. The same day that we receive it. Okay. Because they're all done in the morning. When the post mm -hmm. arrives, all the exchanges, refunds, whatever, they're all processed in the morning. And you, whatever you want to exchange goes out that same day. What a service. I actually want to ask you a question on that because the ones that were sent to me, I measured, like, so I followed the instructions and I measured around my hips and I chose the size 10, like the women's clothing 10. I feel like I want to ask you, should they be more firmer than just comfortable? I know the gusset has to touch the vulva area and have that in the right spot, but should it also feel firm? It should feel supportive without being restrictive, if that makes sense. Okay. Yep. I think maybe I have a big size potentially because there's, there's some gaps. No, uh, you shouldn't have any gaps. Okay. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, what size um, jeans do you take right now? But I'm normally at size 12, <laughs> like 10 to 12, which is why I thought, oh, 10 felt like it was on, it was already going to be on the smaller side. But I don't know if a smaller size is actually going to be too small or too tight, you know, like that Goldilocks of... Yeah. It, it's hard to tell, but the so fact that... Did, did you get a small? Uh, I believe so. Whatever was in line with the 10. But, yeah. You know, you've got the a, size chart. That's that's a, uh, that's a small. Mm. Um, yeah. We, we might need to catch up, you and I. Sure. Um, let's do that. We let's need, do and that. then I will do your measurement and and uh then uh, we can fit you because there shouldn't be any there shouldn't be any gaps okay at all okay all right well it let's do that sit, it should sit snugly but you shouldn't really know it's there but it's supposed to be supportive but like i said it's only been a couple of days and i've only had them on for a short period of time but i've absolutely loved this conversation because i myself have taken in i need to wear them all day and at night time and mm -hmm. keep them on. So I'm going to try that first, but I'd love for you to come back in, let's say three weeks time and let's have this conversation again so that we can share what we had found from my experience in, in a way that's just my experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel like, I, I mean, I've even gone to the point of wearing a, an external pessary from Japan, for goodness sake. And, mm -hmm. and when that didn't work, I didn't talk about it like, oh, yeah, people should or shouldn't go and try it because it could work for someone else. That's like, right. It, just because it wasn't for me, it doesn't mean it won't work for someone else. So, you know. And that's exactly why we have the 100% money back guarantee because we're all different and, you know, something might work for 95% of people, but yeah. there'll be a, a small percentage that it may not. That's and I'm, life. I'm very hopeful that you're going to get some some relief yeah. by wearing this, but we have to work out where your where your sizing's at. It sounds like that's a really important element to be able to get that right. Oh, if if yes. anyone's listening right now and they are like me, they looked at the website and they kind of did the measurements themselves, is there someone at SRC that can also support them to pick yes. the first size? But then they can exchange it. So I love that. I think we will wrap things up there. I can't thank you enough for coming on. I've taken so much away that I'm like, oh, wow, okay, that's really great. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks that for sharing your personal journey because I do oh. think women who disrupt this pelvic health, it's coming from a really hard place. So thanks for being brave and sharing today. No, it's a pleasure. If, you know, even if we help one person by by doing this, then then it's been a success. Bravo to us! Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for having you. me. I don't know about you, but when I see anyone who takes such an adversity and things that happen to them to turn it into something so positive, is truly inspiring. Now, I know that Sinead obviously had some great help from her sister who was a fashion designer, so there's lots of things that made it easier for her. But still, to take something from conception, to go through all the research, all the marketing, all the testing and trying, and then take it to market 
for women to try is just phenomenal. And I know at the beginning of this episode, I did mention that I'm personally trying SRC shorts myself, the Restore for pelvic organ prolapse. As you heard, Sinead and I are going to be talking about maybe trying a different size. When I have that information, I will definitely share it here. Now, coming up for the rest of April, you're going to be hearing more conversations around cesarean section birth and recovery and how we can be doing better in this space. So until next time, bye for now. Mommy.